The materials widget is used in situations where you want the end user to be able to see what a property looks like with different materiality. In this episode today, we'll be learning how to create a materials widget that toggles the kitchen cabinetry between two different color schemes. I am in my scene here. And the first thing I need to do is go to the interface folder, go to HUD, and in here, I'm gonna create a new folder. And the new folder is just gonna be called textures. I'm gonna open it up, go to my finder, and then just find where I've saved those textures I wanna upload. Go back in, I need to create a new active folder and another inactive folder. Open up active and then drag in the corresponding active textures. And then in the inactive one, of course, uploading the inactive textures I've made. There you go. Let's go open up the material widget blueprint and I can delete the border because I don't need that anymore. In the palette, I'm going to search for a horizontal. No, actually I'm going to search for a canvas first. Drop that in. Then I'm going to search for a horizontal box. Drop that into my canvas panel. And then again, I'm going to search for a button. Grab the button square widget we created earlier and then duplicate that twice. So I have three button square instances now. I'm gonna go to the horizontal box and size the content. I'm gonna name the button square to be button underscore material. And the button square one, this one's gonna be button material one. And of course button square two is just gonna be button material two. Cool, I'm gonna get the horizontal box and then change the anchor of that to be bottom center, making sure to hold control and shift. So you see it moves down the bottom here. Now I'm gonna add uh, some positioning to that. So I'm gonna add a position Y value of negative 50. And you'll see that's pushed up our horizontal box, negative 50 pixels from the bottom. Now let's add the textures to these buttons. So with the first button selected, I'm gonna search for UI underscore material, get the active one for the normal state. The hovered state is going to be the same and the press state is going to be the same as well. Change of 50 width, 50 height for all three of these button states. There you go. Now the second button, uh, the normal state is going to be uh, UI underscore material one inactive, 100 width, 50 height. The hovered state is going to be material one active and the press state is also going to be material one active 100 width 50 height for both of those changes as well and the third button is going to be material two inactive for the normal state hovered state is material two active and the same as the pressed state 100 width 50 height for all of these and there you go Let's compile and save as always, and go back to our scene. In the materials folder, I'm gonna add a new blueprint actor class, and I'm gonna call that static mesh selector. Actually, I'm just gonna add a BP underscore in front of that, so I know it's a blueprint. And I'm gonna drag that into my scene right in front of my kitchen cabinetry. I'm gonna edit that blueprint, and in the event graph here, I need to add a new variable. The new variable is gonna be called static mesh, array and I'm going to change the variable type to be static mesh actor. Cool. I'm going to go up to the top right details panel and change this into an array and make that instance editable so I can edit it outside of this event graph. Compile and save. Now back in my scene with my static mesh selector selected, under default you'll see that array that we just created. So if I add a plus, it's going to give me an additional index. And with that index, I can actually start eye dropping the static meshes in my scene. So I'm going to start adding indexes and then eye dropping the selected static mesh on my scene that I want to change materials for. So I want to change the materials for all the kitchen cabinetry in here. So I'm simply just selecting those with the eyedropper. Now you will see this one, it won't allow me to select it. It has a cross on it. That's because it's an active blueprint in and of itself. So we have to treat that one a little bit differently in our event graph, but I can keep selecting the other static meshes that I want. And I think that is all of them. Now, if you're having trouble selecting the static meshes in your scene, you want to go to your levels panel and make sure that that actor selector is in the same level as your geometry. 
If it isn't, then simply select that static mesh blueprint and then right click on the level you want to move it to and then select move actor to selected level. You'll see mine's obviously grayed out and that's because it's already in that level. So now I have all the static meshes I want stored in my static mesh selector array. I need to write some code to change the materials for everything that sits in that array. So I'm going to go to my widget blueprint, then go to the event graph, then add a new function. And that function is just going to be called something like change material. First thing I'm going to do in here is drag off and then get a sequence. And then I'm also going to need to add a new variable and the new variable is going to be called active material and the variable type is going to be an integer. Mine already is. I'm going to get that active material and then off of that, I'm going to get an equals and then off of that, I'm going to get a branch. Then I'm going to get button materials one in my variables and off that, I'm going to drag an active button and then also drag the inactive button functions. Connect true to active and false to inactive. I'm going to change the equals value to one. So it's comparing the active material to a value of one. And in my variables tab, I'm going to select active material and under default value, you'll see I need to compile first. So I'm just going to compile and now it'll let me change the active material default to one. Connect the then zero sequence to the branch and I'm just going to comment this code to be set button state uh, state for material one. And I'm just going to copy and paste that. So I have another instance of it. Connect then one to the branch. And I need to change the equal value to two. And I need to change the button material to two as well. Compile and save. Let's jump back into the materials event graph and get the on clicked event for material button one and material button two. Then holding command, I'm going to drag in the active material, plug that in to the first button and change the value to one. Copy and paste that, change the value to two, and then connect that to my second button here. Now I'm going to get that change material function and then plug that instance into each of my buttons. Compile and save. And basically what's happening is when I press button material one, it's going to set the active material, feed it into the change material function, and it's just going to check to see what the current active material is and set the active button corresponding to that. So in theory that should work, but let's play to test. Open my menu, open the materials widget, the hovers work, and if I click on one, it should stay active. Cool, that looks like it's working, but I need to have an active button by default corresponding to the active material. So let's do that. So I know my default value for my active material is one. So material one button needs to be active by default. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's close this and close this. Now in our material event graph, I'm going to right click and get a event construct. I'm just going to put it between these two buttons here and drag off a sequence and connect them to the top and bottom change materials respectively. I'm going to compile and save and I know my active material is one, so it should show the button active for material one. And it does, perfect. Now if I close that and change the default value to two, then the uh, active material two button should theoretically show. And it does, perfect. So we know that our code's working. If I change it to zero, for example, and test it, then none of the buttons will be active. So that's awesome. So now all we need to do is write some code so that the material changes when we click those buttons. So I'm going to go into my change material function here and right at the end, I'm going to get all actors of class. I'm going to make that class the uh, blueprint uh, static mesh selector from the get actors I'm going to get. And then off of that, I'm going to get the static mesh array. And then off of that, I'm going to for each loop connect that to my get all actors of class. And then the array element I want is going to be set material for the static mesh component and connect that up here. I'm just going to highlight all this and then create a comment. Comment's just going to be change materials of all meshes in actor array. 
and copy that now and I'll paste it below and then just connect that up to the bottom one and now I need to set the actual material so I'm going to go back into my scene find the default material I want and it's this plastic one here I'm going to click on go to in content browser copy that name paste it in here and select that let's find another material um, let's try yep that one looks good for a second scheme so I'm going to go to that on my content browser right click rename just to copy that undo what I did and then go back to my second material and just paste that in like so I'm going to compile and save and I'm going to set my active material to 1 compile that again and then play open materials you'll see the material 1 is on my default showing the default material if I press material 2 it'll change so that is working as intended we're changing between two materials here so now what if your static mesh is already in a blueprint class and say you can't select it using your blueprint static mesh selector that we tried earlier so we're going to have to do a little bit of a different method here and it's actually pretty straightforward as well and very similar to what we just did so if i go to my designer uh no go to my scene you'll notice this cabinet here is already a blueprint actor and you'll see the static mesh is hiding inside there so i just need to get the name of this uh, I can't seem to copy, but that's okay. I know what it is. I'm going to go back into my event graph um, and all the way to the right here, offset material. I'm going to get all actors of class again, but that actor class is going to be that blueprint in my scene. And I know that is called SM Kitchen 25 and just confirm that's correct. So of get actors, I'm going to get, and of that, I'm going to. Get the SM Kitchen 24, which is a static mission inside that actor. And then I'm also going to get SM Kitchen 25, which is also another static mesh in that actor. And off one of these, now I just need to get the set material, connect the other one up to the target, and then connect that to get all actors of class. So again, we just need a set of material. I'm going to use the same one as this because it needs to be the same. Um, so if I click on the magnifying glass, it'll show it on the content browser. I'm going to rename just to copy that. Uh, what's happening here? And then I'm going to paste it into that material. And there you go. Highlight this and then comment this as always. Change materials of selected meshes in Blueprint Actor. Cool, looking good. Let's make a copy of that and then paste that to the bottom one. Connect that up. And I just need to change the material again. Let's use this one. Right click to rename it just so I can copy. Back in our materials event graph and just paste it into this set material right here. So this all should work perfectly. If I compile and test it, let's see if it does. Once it loads, cool. Open materials and let's toggle between the two. So yeah, that uh, Blueprint Actor is now also changing. And looks like everything is changing. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Um, so as a test, let's actually change our Actor Material to be 2 and see if that works now. Compile and play. And by default, it's our darker gray material, which is our Material 2. So yeah, awesome. Uh, that's it for the end of the session. Let's So in our materials widget, we have two buttons that set the active material. These are our two buttons here. Um, an active material is an integer that we created. We have a change materials function, and it's just going to check to see what the current active material is. And it's going to change the material based on an actor we have that stores each of our static meshes in our scene. And then finally, for actors that are already in a blueprint, we just get all actors of that actor itself and then call the static meshes in there to change those materials. So that's it. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next episode.